My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. South Florida's natural climate is mostly tropical, so the humidity and temperature remain high most of the time, making it the perfect place to cultivate plants of all sorts. But what does this have to do with snakes? Well, the plant trade is actually the main cause of one of Florida's most prolific invasive snakes, the Bramini blind snake. I didn't see one while I was here, but they're invasive not just in Florida. They're invasive all over the planet, including a state thought to be completely devoid of snakes, Hawaii. Look at this. This right here is the Bramini blind snake also known as the flower pot snake. So this here is an invasive species here in Hawaii. They're native to Southeast Asia and they are invasive almost all over the world. And, and you notice it's a really small snake. Do they, is this a baby? No, blind snakes are very small. In fact, this I would say is a big one. This is not a dangerous snake at all. This is a non-venomous species. It gets the name blind snake because they have vestigial eyes. Vestigial meaning they don't really work. They've kind of de-evolved. These guys are a fossorial species, which means that they live under the ground. Um, so how did I find this guy if he lives under the ground? Well, I flipped a rock over expecting to see him under there, and sure enough, he was. Actually, I keep saying he. This is actually, believe it or not, I knew this was a she before I even found her. I'll tell you exactly why in just a second. They get the name flower pot snake because they are often transported from continent to continent through soil in people's flower pots. In fact, none of the reptiles in Hawaii that you find here except the sea turtles are native. I mean, Every, all the lizards, all the geckos out here, including these, are all invasive reptiles. So basically, you don't have to go far out into the forest to find this snake if you're in Hawaii. Simple residential areas are actually the better place to look when it comes to finding invasive species, and the blind snake here is no exception. There are thousands of species of snake out there in the world, and there's only one that actually is an all-female species, and that is this. And that is exactly how I knew it was a female before I found it. This is a species that reproduces asexually, meaning that they do not require males to actually reproduce. So basically what they do is they grow up, they lay eggs, and then those eggs do not get fertilized and they hatch regardless. And then the offspring are literally clones of the mother and then eventually they do the same process. So it only takes one of these snakes to be introduced somewhere to establish an entire population. And that's why these guys can spread around so easily. Parthenogenesis is something that occurs in many species of snake. Some snakes, like anacondas, though there are males and females of that species, you will still have some females that will, you know, reproduce through parthenogenesis even though males do exist. So blind snakes in general have very different features than your typical snake. For example, they have no big belly scales like you see on your typical snake. These guys will be feeding mostly on ants, termites, ant eggs, I think possibly maybe even myriapods. One of the last things I want to talk about this snake that is really weird, that is common for many blind snakes, is they have a really pointy tail. I mean this tail is sharp. It's almost pointy sharp. One of its common defenses is to actually take that pointy end of its tail and kind of stab it in you and make the predator think that the predator is getting bitten because it feels exactly like a tooth or a stinger going into you. In fact, I actually almost was convinced that I was getting bit by this snake because of how sharp that feels. Does this snake make a good pet? And the answer is not really. Now, it definitely would be easy to keep this snake uh, in a small enclosure. I mean, it's a small snake, you wouldn't need a very large enclosure. But if you want a snake that you'll see out and moving around your enclosure, this is definitely not the snake for you. Thank you so much for taking the time to educate yourself on the Bramity Blind Snake. I'll see you guys next time with possibly an even cooler snake. Despite that I found this snake nowhere near Florida, I thought it fit nicely in this season because they're just as prolific in Florida as they are in Hawaii. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like, and if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe.